let's do some math for fun and this is about infinite series. Here we are going to evaluate this big giant expression. Alright, if you look at the top, we have 1 plus 1 over 2 to the p plus 1 over 3 to the p plus 1 over 4 to the p and so on, right? That's just the p-series. And here we have a condition, p is greater than 1. And because p is greater than 1, we know the p-series right here converges. And for the bottom here, this is positive, this is negative, this is positive, this is negative, and so on. I'm not going to get into too much detail, but this also converges. Convergent divided by convergent, you know the answer at the end has to be nice, okay? And now, let's think about how we can make some progress with this. We have to make some observation first. This is hard, because in general, if you just want me to calculate the top, it's not that likely for me to do it. We can only do so if p is some specific numbers. For example, 2. If p is equal to 2, we will get the sum of n goes from 1 to infinity, 1 over n to the second power, we know that's going to turn out to be pi squared over 6, okay? That's a famous one. But in general, we cannot really just compute this directly. And for the alternating version, I don't know too much about this either. This must be a really, really well-decided question. I see this an observation I can make, and I'll tell you guys that if you look at the bottom here, it's alternating, all the odd terms are positive, all the even terms are negative, right? So why don't we try to break it apart first, okay? So let's see. And to help me to keep track better, let me use uh, variables along the way. So first, I will call this right here, that x equals to, let me write down the odd terms first. We will have 1, which is the same as 1 over 1 to the p, and then let me put down this, plus 1 over 3 to the p, and then plus 1 over 5 to the p, and so on. All the odd terms. And then I used x already. Of course, let me use y here. And let me just write down the even terms, but let me put on the positive version right here, okay? So let me write down 1 over 2 to the p, and then I will add it with the next one. It will be 1 over 4 to the p, and then 1 over 6 to the p, and so on. Right, so this is what we have. And now what? Well, this is the interesting part, okay? Let's look at the even terms. The nice thing about it is that when you have even numbers, in fact, you can also produce odd numbers. Let me show you. Let's look at the 2 right here, okay? Let me write the 2 as 2 times 1. And then since I just break down the 2 inside here, of course, this is still raised to a p power like this. And then for the 4, I can look at the 4 as 2 times 2, and then raised to the p power. And then for the 6, I can break it down as 2 times 3, and then raised to the p power like that. As I told you, you can get odd numbers from even numbers by flattening out the 2s. Right now, you can do this right, infinitely many times if you like. And the good thing is that once you fat out the 2s in the denominator, you are going to have 2 to the p in all the denominators, right? So that means we can factor things out. So this is going to be the same as, let me factor it out in red for you guys. We will have 2 to the p in the denominator, let me write it as 1 over 2 to the p. And then, here we are going to have 1 over 1 to the p, which is 1, okay, and then I will add 1 over 2 to the p, and then plus 1 over 3 to the p, and you know the next one is going to be 1 over 4 to the p, and then 1 over 5 to the p, and so on, okay? Hmm, so what good, good does this do? Okay, now it's about time for me to work with this as well, not just the x, y. Alright, so let's see. On the top here, the whole series, right, the whole p-series, is nothing but just x plus y, isn't it? 1 plus 1 over 2 to the p plus 1 over 3 to the p, and so on, so on, so on, so on. So on the numerator, we just have x plus y, like that. And on the bottom, it's just uh, all the past d terms, all the r terms right here. Subtract all the even terms, right? So we will have x minus y for the bottom. 
okay? And as we just mentioned it right here, why it's this, and then once you factor the out right here, we get this. This is what? This is the original numerator. <laughs> and this is just the whole P series, right? So what I can do for you guys is I can write this down as 1 over 2 to the P, and this together is just x plus y, right? And then of course the left hand side is still equal to y. Right now we are making some progress and now hopefully you can work something out nicely so that we don't have the variables at the end, the x and y, okay? Hmm, let's see. Hey, look at this right here. This is an equation that we have, right? y is equal to 1 over 2 to the p times x plus y. The x, is nothing we can do about that, but uh, this is rather interesting. And um, I see that we have x here, right? And you have y and y here. Why don't we try to isolate x from this equation and then plug into this? And hopefully, good things happen. Right, so let's try that. So, by looking at this equation, okay, uh, I will uh, just write it down again right here. So, by looking at that equation, we know y is equal to 1 over 2 to the p times x plus y. First, of course, we can multiply 2 to the p on both sides, right? So that they cancel, and then we will have 2 to the p times y is equal to x plus y. And then I want to isolate x, right, as I just talked about it. So let me subtract y, subtract y on both sides. At the end, I can get x is equal to, let me just write it down as how it is, okay? So we have 2 to the p times y, and then minus y, like that. This is x, all right? Well, what we can do is, I am going to plug in this into this x here, and see what can we get. So this x becomes that. 2 to the p times y minus y for the x, right? And then we add the y at the end. Over, we have the x once again is that, which we will have 2 to the p times y minus y and then minus this y, All right? <laughs> On the top here, you see this and that will cancel. We will just have 2 to the p times y like that. On the bottom, <laughs> Uh, this is the same as saying 2 to the p times y. Minus y, minus y, of course, is minus 2y. And notice that both of them have y, so I can factor out the y, right? And then we put the y at the end. So we put the y like this, and then we will have 2 to the p minus 2. Okay, this is the same as that. And now what? This y and that y cancel. Finally, we just get 2 to the p over 2 to the p minus 2. And here is your answer, right? Here is the answer for it. <laughs> so as, is, as you can see, I don't know exactly what the numerator is, I don't know exactly what the denominator is, but at the end, the ratio is going to be 2 to the p over 2 to the p minus 2. So if you want to give me a finite value for p, let's say p is equal to 5 in this expression, at the end, you know you just have to work out 2 to the 5 over 2 to the 5 minus 2. So cool, isn't it?